Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Friday. Uh, I, I have no questions. I mean, I have no announcements, so I'll go straight to questions. Oh, wait, I do have, you probably have in your inbox a statement from the President uh, on Secretary Stephen Chu's departure. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, the President, uh, if you've read it, uh, thanks uh, Secretary Chu for his dedicated service on behalf of the American people. As a Nobel Prize winning physicist or scientist, Steve brought to the Energy Department a unique understanding of both the urgent challenge presented by climate change and the tremendous opportunity that clean energy represents for our country. Uh, this again is the President speaking. During his time as Secretary, Steve helped my administration move America towards real energy independence. Uh, over the past four years, we have doubled the use of renewable energy, dramatically reduced our dependence on foreign oil, and put our country on a path to win the global race uh, for clean energy jobs. Uh, you can read the full statement at your leisure. With that, I'll go to questions. Yes, sir. Thanks, Jay. Does the President consider the attack on our embassy in Turkey to be a terrorist attack, and does he have any information about who may have perpetrated it? That's an excellent question. The uh, act, uh, a suicide bombing on the perimeter of an embassy is by definition an act of terror. It is a terrorist attack. However, we do not know at this point who is responsible or the motivations behind the attack. The attack itself is clearly an act of terror. And on another topic, uh, the birth control opt-out, is this a recognition that the initial rules that were put forward were an overreach? No, no, not at all. The, 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 well, for details about the rulemaking process which, uh, uh, on which there is news today from HHS, I refer you to HHS. Uh, I would remind you, however, uh, of the policy that the President outlined last year. Uh, and he, in outlining it, he set two important criteria. One, uh, we had to ensure that women have access to preventive services like contraception uh, and that the policy also respects religious beliefs. The, those guidelines, those criteria have been followed by uh, the Department in promulgating this rule, this proposed rule, uh, and uh, as part of that process there's, there's more uh, comment that will be taken on it, uh, but for details I'd refer you to HHS. Yep. Um, Senator Hagel came under harsh criticism from Republicans at his hearing yesterday. His performance was also panned as being lethargic and defensive. Uh, does White House have concerns that his chances for nomination, confirmation may be slipping? Are you willing to uh, wage a protracted battle to ensure that his nomination goes through? And can you say how he prepared for that hearing? Uh, I'll say a couple of things. First of all, we expect the Senate to confirm uh, Senator Hagel uh, to the position of Secretary of Defense. Uh, by my estimates and reading of press reports, uh, there has been a net increase in the number of confirmed yes votes for Senator Hagel's confirmation since the hearing ended. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, hearing itself, I th what struck me was the stridency uh, of some of the uh, questioning from uh, Republican critics, his former colleagues, uh, the focus on a war that this president ended over which we can all agree uh, there is disagreement. Uh, the President fully supports Senator Hagel's views on this. Uh, they were the President's views. They were the views the President expressed when he ran for office in 2008 and won. Uh, they were the views uh, that he expressed uh, uh, in a campaign against Senator McCain, who, has, uh, who spent uh, most of his time asking about uh, Senator Hagel's views on Iraq. Uh, the President promised to end that war, and he did. At the time, in 2008, as I recall, uh, Senator McCain suggested we might have troops in Iraq for 100 years. Uh, that's certainly not a position that President Obama or then Senator Obama subscribed to. It's obviously not a position that Senator Hagel uh, uh, believes was the right one. And the fact that there's a disagreement over that, I think we can all posit. Uh, what I can tell you is that the President believes that Senator Hagel will make an ex excellent Secretary of Defense and that he will be confirmed. And he looks forward to working with uh, Senator Hagel in that position as we uh, continue to advance our national security priorities. I want to return to a topic that, that came up yesterday. Uh, today's jobs data showed the unemployment rate rising to 7.9 percent. It's kind of hovered in that range for mm -hmm. a number of months. Um, to be sure, uh, the economy created jobs, but it's at a relatively modest pace. Uh, we had a report recently of contraction in the nation's output in the fourth quarter of last year. Um, increasingly, you have people like Laura Tyson 
writing columns calling for uh, the need for a plan for faster growth, not deficit reduction. Um, what does the president tell, you know, I know you've talked mm -hmm. about how all of the president's plans uh, envision job creation, but what does the president tell his advisors when he sees these signs of a sluggish recovery? Uh, what is he asking uh, in the way of things to speed recovery, create jobs, and stimulate growth? I'll go to the, the narrow question first. Uh, every time the President meets with his economic advisors to discuss policy proposals and refinements to existing policies, uh, the focus is on uh, job creation and economic growth. And that includes uh, when we have discussions about uh, deficit reduction. As I've said many times and as the President has made clear, deficit reduction is not a goal unto itself. It is, it is a means to, if done right, uh, this, the desired goal, which is greater growth and greater job creation uh, as part of an overall economic policy. Um, I would note that today's jobs figures uh, and the revisions that we saw in previous month's jobs figures mean that over 35 months, uh, we have created 6.1 million private sector jobs. We created in 2012, and I revised from my remarks the other day, uh, when I said 2 million, we created 2.2 million now with the revisions uh, jobs in 2012. That means that we have been moving in the right direction when it comes to job creation. What is also true is that when this president took office in January of 2009, we were in the midst of the worst recession since the Great Depression. We were in economic free fall. We were losing, we were hemorrhaging jobs at something like three-quarters of a million jobs per month. Uh, and the hole dug by that recession uh, in jobs terms was more than eight and a half million. Uh, we still have work to do and we need to make sure, uh, to your first point and the first part of your question, that when we devise economic policies and we negotiate with Congress on how to move forward, uh, that we cannot neglect the essential responsibility to ensure that the policies we put in place promote job creation, promote economic growth. Uh, and that is why in every proposal the President has put forward, every budget, every submission to the Super Committee, every document he has uh, placed before Speaker Boehner in their negotiations, uh, he has included within his overall deficit reduction uh, plans uh, specific measures to invest in our economy, to ensure that it continues to grow, to ensure that it creates jobs, specific members that address some of the weaknesses in our economy. Uh, the need to grow, uh, uh, to, the need to grow jobs within the infrastructure, within the construction business. With, if the Congress had passed the American Jobs Act, those components that they refused to pass, m you know, thousands, tens of thousands of people would be, uh, more people would be at work in the construction industry, and that's an industry that has been rebounding of late, very importantly. Uh, if Republicans hadn't refused to go along with it, uh, the the substantial job loss we've seen in state and, state and local uh, employment, especially among teachers, uh, would have been uh, addressed through the American Jobs Act. And these, are the, these are ideas that the President continues to insist be part of any proposal moving forward when it comes to overall economic policy. Yes, John. Um, I just have a question. John Kerry is quoted in the Boston Globe saying that the President offered him the job of Secretary of State a full week before Susan Rice pulled out. Is that timeline accurate? Well, I don't have uh, conversations to read out to you. What I can tell you is that uh, two things. One, the President uh, is very confident that now Secretary Kerry will uh, be uh, an excellent member of his cabinet and will serve uh, auspiciously in that position. He also believes that uh, Ambassador Rice has done and will continue to, to do an excellent job uh, on the President's national security team as our representative to the United Nations and that she could do any job uh, in that field. Uh, very ably, and that's what he said at the time. Uh, you know, Ambassador Rice made the decision to withdraw from that process. Uh, at the time, and we discussed it often I, before you were in this chair, John, but I, you know, I know you covered it from elsewhere, you know, the uh, really absurd uh, obsession uh, for political purposes by critics on Capitol Hill on the talking points provided uh, for appearances on a Sunday show with regards to the attack in Benghazi. You know, that remains, I think, an unfortunate episode, uh, one that will not reflect well on the Senate in the long run or on those who uh, continue to press it. 
the President is very glad that Ambassador Rice uh, is continuing to serve uh, in his Cabinet and on his team as our uh, Ambassador to the United Nations. Uh, the reason why I ask is, is he apparently Senator Kerry is re or Secretary, soon to be Secretary mm -hmm. Kerry, is, 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 Moments reading, away, I guess, is yeah. reading this out. I mean, he said, uh, the President called him a week before, he said, he, this is Kerry quoted, he called me and said, you're my choice, I want you to do this. He asked me to keep it quiet. I did. I sat on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not going to. Now, the, the reason I, why I, I ask would, is because sure. you, from, from that podium, told us just two days before uh, Rice uh, pulled out that the decision had not been made. So I'm just trying to think, you know, who, who's right here? You or Well, I, I, I would uh, simply say that I'm not going to read out specific conversations. I speak for the president, and, uh, you know, the president, when he makes a decision, announces it. And, uh, and that was the case. And are, are any concern that... Kerry is kind of reading out a private conversation well, with I, the president? I, no, the president is uh, enormously gratified that uh, Senator Kerry uh, was confirmed uh, by such a uh, substantial margin by his former colleagues and looks forward to uh, what he expects to be excellent service as the head of the State Department. And just one other quick mm -hmm. one, there's a report that uh, a exact replica of the Oval Office is being built in the Eisenhower building. Uh, for while the renovations are going on, is that accurate? Uh, I would refer you to GSA for you know construction and and renovation uh, information. Yeah, but the president would be in there. Again, I would refer you to the GSA. Uh, I have no uh, moving uh, plans to announce. Okay. Yeah, that's the guard. Yeah, go ahead, Major. Uh, what's the balance that the administration is trying to strike with the proposed rules on contraception? I think it's reflected in the criteria I just. Uh, repeated for you the, the criteria that, that he made clear were important to him as uh, these rules were put in place, which is that uh, we need to provide uh, preventive services, access uh, to preventive services for all women, uh, and that includes contraception. Uh, and we also needed to uh, respect um, religious beliefs, and, and that is the balance the President made clear he wanted uh, uh, to be uh, kept in mind as these rules were uh, proposed and developed. Uh, for details on them, I honestly just don't have details on them. I would refer you to HHS. I believe they're uh, briefing on them this afternoon. Now, a couple of days ago, you described uh, what you think are changes in Republican positions on the sequester as nakedly political. Mm -hmm. So I just want to refer you to I stand by that. OK. I thought you might. Uh, in November of 2011, the President said, I will veto any effort to get rid of those automatic spending cuts to domestic and defense spending. There will be no easy off-ramps on this one. Well, that's yeah. a quote taken wholly out of context. That's in reference to attempts to uh, eliminate part of the sequester and not the other, which would suggest that when uh, the Republicans and Democrats worked together to forge the Budget uh, Control Act and to reach that compromise, uh, that some members were crossing their fingers when they signed on the dotted line. The fact is, the sequester was designed Defense cuts, non-defense cuts, half and half, both of them onerous, both of them bad policy, specifically to compel Congress to avoid the uh, implementation of the sequester by doing the responsible thing and coming up with $1.2 trillion in addi additional deficit reduction uh, in a balanced and appropriate way. Uh, that's what the President was talking about. There were discussions underway about, uh, well, let's just remove part of the sequester, the part we don't like, even though that was never the agreement. Uh, and it was wholly disingenuous to suggest uh, that that was an appropriate course to take. The entire sequester is bad policy. It was designed to be bad policy, both on the defense across the board cuts and the non-defense across the board cuts. Uh, the uh, negative consequences of implementation would be bad across the board. That's the point. So Congress needs to do its job. The President has put forward compromise proposals that would uh, eliminate the sequester entirely, achieve the $1.2 trillion, and then some in additional deficit reduction in a balanced way. He looks forward to working with Congress to do that. Uh, and and that's, that's how it was designed. And that's how that uh, quote was understood at the time. So the veto is a dead issue. You want the sequester removed or re realigned? We want the sequester. We do not believe the sequester should be in. We think, unlike Republicans who are now saying it's a uh, uh, a good political card to have in your back pocket, uh, that it wouldn't be so bad if it were implemented, which contradicts, you know, scores of things they said uh, last year when it was uh, potentially uh, going to come to pass. The President continues to believe, consistent with his previous position, that the sequester is bad policy and we should 
uh, avoid it by implementing uh, further responsible deficit reduction in a balanced uh, in a balanced way. So I'm not. The point is, I'm not sure what you're asking. Does the point does the president oppose implementation of the sequester? Absolutely, consistent with his position all along. I have some Republicans now uh, contradicted themselves and said that sequester would be fine. Uh, yes. To follow up on Jonathan's point, uh, a question. So you do not, from the podium, wish to in any way correct Senator Kerry's quote. I'm not going to get into private conversations between. Uh, the president and, and a senator or a cabinet member. Uh, what I can tell you is that the president made a, 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 an announcement. When he had made a decision, he made an announcement. Jay, yeah. um, was the HHS announcement today prompted by legal suits uh, uh, that challenged the contraception? And would you expect it to resolve those legal suits? These are details that I would have to refer you to. HHS to answer. What I can tell you is that there's a process in place. Uh, there's a preliminary process, and then a, you know this is a, a stage in a process of rulemaking that is entirely consistent with the way these things work. Uh, and uh, the rules themselves, or the proposed rules, are in keeping with the criteria the president laid out when we had this discussion last year. On the jobs numbers, there are indications from um, the, uh, the conference board, I believe that more people are delaying their retirement. And that's having an impact on youth uh, employment. Does that trouble you? Uh, I, I haven't seen those reports. And I would refer you for uh, you know, detailed analysis of the jobs report to uh, Alan Kruger's uh, uh, writings on this, the chairman of the Ec uh, Council of Economic Advisors. Um, you, know, what I, you know, what I can tell you is um, in t 2012, with the revisions, the average monthly job creation was at, uh, at each to be the average uh, of each month at the time was 142,000 per month. It's now been revised up to 181,000 per month. Uh, again, that means that we had a job creation in 2012 uh, of more than two million jobs, 2.2 million jobs. Uh, we had an additional 100. Uh, these are private sector jobs. Uh, additional, I believe, 166,000 private sector jobs added by businesses uh, in January. Uh, that continues a uh, now 35-month trend. I want to make that clear. I think the other day I said 54, the 35-month trend of positive job growth uh, in the private sector. And the President believes we need to continue the work uh, towards uh, re recovery from the terrible recession and uh, towards further economic growth and job creation beyond that. We need to pass laws that enhance the recovery, enhance job creation, enhance middle class security and position this country for um, the kind of economic performance in the 21st century uh, that the United States uh, enjoyed in the 20th. Yes? Jay, thanks. Uh, I want to try one more on HHS. Mm -hmm. uh, under the announcement, it said that the new opt-out would not expand, quote, the universe of employer plans that would qualify for the exemptions beyond what was intended in the 2012 final rules. How can the administration guarantee that? Again, uh, Chris, I appreciate it. I just I do not have details on these rules. Um, uh, they're briefing on them. In, uh, I, I just uh, am not uh, in a position to answer questions about uh, the specifics of the rulemaking process since HHS uh, has done that. I, you know, I, when I'm back on Monday, I may have more, or I think we're traveling Monday. But but when I gaggle, uh, but at this point, that you know, they they have all the information. And on this question, can you update us on any discussions that have been going on between the White House and congressional leaders? to avert the sequester? I mean, has any progress been made, given that we're getting closer to the deadline? Well, I would simply say that uh, our position, uh, which is, I believe, shared by uh, many in Congress, is that we need to approach this in a balanced way. Uh, there are uh, ways to do this that uh, would uh, eliminate the sequester, uh, would do it in a balanced way, would allow us to continue to invest in our economy and help it grow and create jobs. You know, and we will work with Congress uh, to help bring that about. I don't have specific progress to report to you, uh, but the President does believe that progress needs to be made, uh, that it is not. Uh, it may be viewed by some on Capitol Hill as sound political strategy to flirt with or allow sequester uh, to take place. The President believes that's bad policy. We, you know, we saw uh, a 40-year record drop in um, uh, defense spending in the fourth quarter that had uh, to do in part with 
uh, anticip anticipation of the implementation of the sequester, uh, and that obviously had negative consequences for GDP. So, you know, we ought to get about the business of uh, reaching an agreement on balanced deficit reduction that uh, makes the sequester what it was always meant to be, which was uh, eliminated by better policy. Given that we're getting so President's been in touch with congressional leaders in recent years? I don't have any conversations uh, to read out of the President's, but the, you know, we are engaged with Congress on this issue. We look forward to proposals from congressional leaders on uh, how to address this in a responsible and balanced way, and we uh, fully intend to uh, make our views clear and our positions clear uh, in the coming days. And more broadly, Jay, obviously the President has been talking a lot about immigration. Uh, gun policies, is he concerned that he'll lose momentum on those issues as we get closer to the sequester and then obviously the other fiscal issues that are looming? Look, these are all important issues. The number one priority that this President has uh, is what he has always had, which is uh, restoring economic growth and job creation in this country uh, to a place where uh, we as America are positioned for the 21st century for the kind of economic uh, performance that we enjoyed in the 20th, and that means um, recovering from the worst recession since the Great Depression. It means uh, investing in uh, the right areas of our economy to help it grow, to help uh, it create and develop industries that uh, provide well-paying jobs to Americans here uh, that allow us to address uh, you know, energy issues for the 21st century uh, that in ways that produce economic benefits uh, for this country that allow us to ensure that uh, our kids are getting uh, properly educated for the 21st century economy, and that means making investments in education. It means uh, trying to address a situation where even as we have uh, now for 35 straight months seen private sector job creation, we have for much of that time seen uh, job loss in state and local governments, a vast portion of it uh, in education, i.e. school teachers. That's why the President has put forward proposals to Congress to try to address that problem. Uh, and he'll continue to p push forward. This is his highest priority. It's important to look at things like immigration reform, as businesses have very vocally and publicly, uh, as uh, an economic necessity. The economic benefits of comprehensive immigration reform are many-fold and very important. And that's uh, one of the reasons, uh, a principal reason, why the President believes we need to come together in a bipartisan way and get this done. There is no reason to delay. There is every reason, uh, both uh, economic and otherwise, uh, to continue the progress that's been made that we've seen uh, and, and get it done, get, get a bill passed uh, that represents uh, the consensus here that's building, uh, that reflects the principles the President has put forward and that, that are shared by the bipartisan group in the Senate. Uh, and, uh, and, and make it law, make it fact. Peter. Okay. Um, are there any changes in the way the White House may proceed tactically to ensure uh, Hagel is confirmed? For example, um, changes in the way it does outreach to the Hill or uh, asking members to come forward perhaps and um, endorse Mr. Hagel? Well, Peter, all I can say is what I said uh, initially, which is that by my read of news reports, the number of senators who have uh, said uh, positively that they will vote to confirm uh, Senator Hagel as Secretary of Defense has increased uh, since the hearing yesterday. Um, and we anticipate and hope that the Senate will act quickly to confirm him and put him in place at the Pentagon. Those same news reports also had his performance in terms of the way he answered various senators' questions. I know you took issue with the tough questioning by Republican mm -hmm. senators. Is the White House pleased with the way Senator Hagel answered questions? I think Senator Hagel answered uh, the questions uh, appropriately and did a fine job. Uh, part of the, uh, I mean, if you look, if you take, take all the news clips, uh, not the whole performance, but the news clips that have dominated uh, television uh, reporting on this, uh, they have focused on a series of exchanges that I think by any estimation largely represent badgering by uh, questioners. <laughs> Uh, over issues like uh, what was, you know, why did you disagree with me over Iraq? And, uh, you know, I, we are prepared to say that, uh, you know, then Senator Obama had a view on Iraq. It was one of the reasons why he ran for president and ran on that position and won in 2008 against Senator McCain. Uh, 
Uh, he vowed to end the war in Iraq uh, in a responsible way that protected our national security interests. He has done that. Uh, and he is now focused on winding down the war in Afghanistan. Now, somewhat bizarrely, given that we have 66,000 Americans in uniform in Afghanistan, senators yesterday in a hearing for the nomination of a Secretary of Defense asked very few questions about that active war. Uh, instead, they wanted to relitigate the past. And, uh, you know, that argument will continue, uh, no doubt, and will be discussed uh, by participants and then historians. Uh, we feel very comfortable about uh, where President Obama has been and is on that and where Senator Hagel has been and is on that uh, with regards to the argument and discussion and debate about Iraq. Uh, what he's focused on, the President and Senator Hagel, is on the challenges we have today uh, around the world, our national security challenges, and they include Afghanistan, a subject which uh, got relatively uh, short shrift yesterday among the Senators who uh, were concerned about relitigating the past. Uh, we believe he'll be confirmed. Uh, as I said before, he has, um, I think there's been an increase in the number of senators who've come out in support of him, not a decrease uh, since the hearing. And, and while the process is important and it's a, it's a, a vital function of our democracy, the, the confirmation process, uh, I would be stunned if in the end Republican senators chose to try to block the nomination of a decorated war veteran uh, who was once among their colleagues in the Senate as a Republican. I think the, the it depends on what, I think I addressed that yesterday. I think uh, Senator Hagel addressed uh, some of the questions about his answers on, on Iran. Uh, you know, ultimately, as I said yesterday, uh, you know, we judge the regime in Tehran by its behavior by its flagrant violation of its international obligations. That behavior is certainly illegitimate. Ultimately, it's for the Iranian people to judge and decide the legitimacy of their government. We deal with the government we have to deal with. And in our dealings with that government, with our international partners, uh, we have been relentless in uh, pursuit of a policy that uh, insists that Iran give up its nuclear weapons ambitions, uh, get right with its international obligations, uh, and their refusal to do that thus far has resulted in uh, the greatest isolation uh, that it's ever experienced and the most punif punitive uh, sanctions regime in history. But Hegel's answers were appropriate and fine on Iran. Uh, again, you, you want to play a gotcha game. I know you want to write that down. I'm saying that, that if you want to ask me a specific question about Iran I can, or a specific answer he gave, I, I, can, I can certainly answer that. The, the senator uh, answered questions for something like I don't know, hours yesterday, seven hours, five and a half eight hours, hours, eight hours, thank you. And uh, uh, I think conducted himself appropriately and well, and the President looks forward to uh, his confirmation as Secretary of Defense. Okay. Yes, and then Roger. Yeah, in Ankara, mm -hmm. a Turkish high-level official Minister of the Interior said, the suicide bomber was likely connected to domestic militant group, and Prime Minister also said the attack demonstrated a, a need for international uh, cooperation against terrorism. So, first question: What would be what would be your message to Turkey for its long-term terrorism problem? Second, what steps do you think U.S. administration might be willing to take take help to Turkey? Well, I, I think this is an incident that has uh, just occurred. I, I don't want to get ahead of it. it it's being investigated. Uh, we strongly condemn uh, what was a suicide attack against our embassy in Ankara, uh, and which uh, took place at the embassy's outer security perimeter. And, and as I said earlier, details are still uh, emerging uh, uh, about you know, what exactly happened, who was responsible. It was clearly an act of terror, uh, and it cost uh, uh, the life of at least one uh, individual, a Turkish security guard, as you know. Um, we'll work closely and are working closely with Turkish authorities to investigate the incident and bring the perpetrators to justice. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of those killed and injured, and we greatly appreciate the support we have re received from our Turkish friends in responding to this terrible tragedy. Turkey remains one of our strongest partners in the region, a NATO ally, uh, we have worked shoulder to shoulder with the Turks to counter terror threats. This goes to your question. And this will only strengthen our resolve. 
I mean, Turkish has been a very important ally, uh, broadly speaking, and in the effort to counter terrorism. Uh, I think I promised Roger then, I'm sorry, and then Brianna. Uh, the President, speaking to the Democrats Center retreat next week in Annapolis, uh, do you have any sketch of the main message there? I don't have any uh, also, scheduling announcements to make or uh, remarks to preview. All right. I'll and is a uh, statement on Ed Koch coming? Uh, yeah, I'm sure it is, yes. And what's the President's plans for Super Bowl? He will watch it. <laughs> With interest. Friend, friend uh, so you know, I have. I, 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 I don't know who, who who will join him in watching the game. I know, uh, although his Bears are not in it, uh, he looks forward to the game. Uh, you know, some interesting dynamics there, brother versus brother. Uh, I think uh, we all expect it to be uh, highly entertaining. Um, who does he think is going to win? You know, I actually have not asked him. I meant to ask him yesterday, and I forgot. I, I don't know who, who he favors, in fact, uh, in, this, in this particular matchup. Uh, I think, again, absent his uh, beloved Chicago Bears, he probably just has an interest in a, a, a close and good football game. Is this an opportunity to mix with members of Congress, or is it just going to be something? I, I just don't have any announcements to make about uh, who's going to be there. Brianna. Thanks, Jay. Um, the initial accommodation that was announced um, last winter on the HHS mandate, it appeared to thread a needle to appease progressive Catholics that the administration had inadvertently upset during what was arguably a very politically charged time of an election year. Why not spell out the details of the accommodation that we're seeing today back in February 10th of last year when the president came out and said, we weren't going to spend a year doing this, we're going to spend a week or two doing this. Well, because there's a process that is required to take place, and, and entirely appropriately, what was announced last year was an advanced notice of proposed rulemaking. You know, that's the kind of phrase you could only find in Washington, right? But that's how it works, an advanced notice of proposed rulemaking, which is then followed by a notice of proposed rulemaking, which is what we have today. And in between there, there is work on the rule, and that's what's happened as a result, in part, of uh, input that's brought in uh, as part of the process. But again, for details about how this builds on and clarifies uh, you know, what uh, we had last year, I would refer you to HHS. I just don't have the details for you. Are you expecting to have support from religiously affiliated employers? Again, I, 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 the President's been very clear about his views on this. Uh, he's been very clear about what he believes are two compelling interests, which is the uh, necessity of and the appropriateness of providing preventive services to women across the country, uh, including contraception, and uh, of making sure that we are mindful of religious liberty. And uh, he has instructed uh, those who work for him on this issue to be uh, cognizant of those criteria as they develop the rules. I mean, he came out here and made mm -hmm. a statement. Why, if it was such a priority for him, why couldn't this have happened a year ago? Uh, Brianna, you're talking about a process, a rulemaking process that is common in you know agencies that develop rules based on laws all the yeah, time. He got I would refer you and, and to, to indicate that there would be an he would answer, Well, he answered questions about his views on it, and there and and uh, and and they were very clear those views, and those views informed uh, the rulemaking process. I, I, in terms of how that has unfolded, I think it's uh, the pace and direction is entirely within the norm, and I refer you to HHS for more details. And then if, if employers don't pay for the coverage and employees aren't paying for the contraceptive coverage but insurers are paying for it, then isn't the cost of it being absorbed by other insured folks or maybe even taxpayers? Again, I, you're asking me details about how this process works that uh, HHS can answer for you. I just, I will, uh, I will uh, do a little research over the weekend and promise if you want me to answer those questions, even though they could be answered today, uh, down the street. I will have answers for you. The, the details about the rulemaking process uh, are available as we speak at the Department of Health and Human Services. I mean, this is a very, I mean, this is a very controversial Brianna, part of this whole thing. I just, I, I don't I, understand I, why the White House, I obviously don't, they're involved. But I suggest um, you probably even have a cell phone. You could go out and call HHS now and get more details. I don't have them at this time for you. Jay, can you respond to criticism that's just come in about HHS? The HHS? <laughs> <laughs> is this the Daily Show? Cheryl. Thanks, Jay. Well, we um, when is the president going to sign the debt limit bill? I'll have to get back to you. I'm sure he will. Okay. Um, next week, the House is saying it's going to vote on a bill to force the president to submit a balanced budget. What do you think about that? The president has put forward uh, repeatedly 
budget proposals that address our fiscal challenges, that bring our uh, very important deficit and debt to GDP ratios uh, to a level that puts us on a sustainable fiscal path uh, for a significant period of time. Um, his proposals reflect the need for balance, uh, the need to ensure that even as we bring our deficits down, uh, that we do not ask seniors or uh, families with children who have disabilities or families who are struggling to send their kids to college uh, to bear the burden so that we can allow hedge fund managers to keep a loophole in the tax code uh, that results in them paying a vastly lower tax rate than most of us in this room and most every average American out there. Uh, that's a balanced approach that is broadly supported by the American people and it's a responsible way to reduce our deficit. It's an approach that was endorsed uh, by uh, several bipartisan commissions who have addressed uh, with their own proposals, the fiscal challenges we face, and it's the, the approach that the President absolutely intends to uh, put forward as he continues negotiations with Congress. It is a pro an approach, by the way, that was the primary subject of, de of debate in last year's election, uh, and uh, the American people were pretty clear about uh, which approach they preferred. Steve. Um, mm -hmm. uh, 43 uh, Republicans senators have signed a letter to the president today saying they will block any nominee for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau unless you change the law. Uh, it's the same stance they had in the last Congress. I'm wondering if you have any reaction to that. Well, I, I'm not aware of the letter. It is most unfortunate that, you know, a minority of the U.S. Senate continues to oppose implementation of Wall Street reform uh, that was designed entirely to protect the American taxpayer from uh, the kind of uh, crisis that we saw engendered by the collapse of our financial sector uh, in 2007 and 2008. It, it was designed to protect the, the establishment of the Consumer uh, Finance Protection Bureau uh, was to make sure that uh, average Americans who do business with and have dealings with financial institutions have somebody in Washington looking out for their interests because the financial institutions, as you know, uh, have plenty of people here in Washington <coughs> looking out for theirs. So uh, it is unfortunate that Republicans, I guess, uh, as you cited, um, have continued their efforts to uh, oppose this bureau, uh, oppose the implementation of a key component of the Wall Street reform law. Uh, and, it's, and it's a tough one to explain to the American people whose memories are not short about what this country went through and, and what the taxpayers had to do to prevent the total collapse of the financial sector as we dealt with institutions that were too big to fail. Uh, and uh, both the Bush administration and the Obama administration uh, had to make decisions that were uh, unpopular uh, but were necessary to save uh, total collapse. Uh, fortunately, the money that uh, was invested, the taxpayer money that was invested by this administration has been paid back. Uh, but the Wall Street reform was designed to ensure that never again would an institution uh, that had to be unwound uh, have to be funded in that process by the American taxpayer. The Consumer Finance Protection, Protection Bureau is an, an important element of Wall Street reform. The President urges the Senate uh, to confirm Richard Cordray uh, to the head of that bureau. Uh, as the letter you cited demonstrates, he has substantially, substantially more than a majority suppo of support within the U.S. Senate. Uh, that should surely be enough for confirmation. Alexis. Address directly personnel or cabinet appointments, but let me ask you a separate question. The president is going to be giving his State of the Union uh, address on this 12th, and many folks in the federal departments are looking to the leadership that they're going to have to try to implement the president's agenda mm -hmm. or whatever. And he's had a, quite a number, even in the economic department, so USTR or mm -hmm. commerce or labor vacancies. So, does the president hope to be able to point the his federal workers towards the leadership that they're going to have by the State of the Union address? Can we see or expect that? To well, I, I think it's, 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 a, it's a good question, I, but I do not have uh, a timetable to provide to you for uh, further personnel announcements. What I can say is that uh, when it comes to cabinet service, uh, the President's cabinet in the first term had remarkably low turnover historically, uh, and it is true now after four years that there have been a number of departures and therefore. Uh, spots to fill. Uh, but the President is doing that uh, in a very deliberate way and will continue to make announcements uh, of key appointments uh, as he's ready to make them. And he, but he'll do that expeditiously and then he will hope, uh, going back to questions about uh, Senator Hagel, that then the Senate and Richard Cordray uh, will uh, move quickly 
uh, to consider the nominations and, and confirm them as appropriate. Jay? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Maria Pena with FNU Services. Um, I was wondering if you have any reaction to the uh, Human Rights Watch report that came out yesterday that was very critical of the U.S. on several points. Um, immigration policy, uh, the, the fact that the U.S. is the, um, the country that has the most people in jails in the world, and also the policies, uh, abusive practices, quote unquote, in Guantanamo, on, on one note. And the other question is, you know, Senator Menendez is a key point person uh, leading the effort for immigration reform. Is the White House concerned about the Senate um, Ethics Committee reviewing allegations that he's involved in some sort of scandal? I, well, I, I have nothing to say about that. I would refer you to uh, the Senate. On, on the broader issue, I'm not aware of the report. I think uh, the President, when it comes to immigration, has put forward, uh, again, comprehensive immigration reform that he believes is absolutely essential uh, for uh, the health of our economy and the protection of our middle class. And he looks forward to working with Republicans and Democrats in both the Senate and the House uh, to get that confirmed. He's made that, uh, the fact that that's a priority of his very clear. Um, on, on, I just, I'm not familiar with the report you cite, so I, I can't really respond. Chris. Uh, Jay, following the confirmation hearing yesterday, the LGBT military group outserve SLVN issued a statement saying Senator Hagel, as Defense Secretary, must use, use his authority to ban discrimination and guarantee equal opportunity for lesbian, gay, bisexual, <coughs> and trans transgender members of the military. That non-discrimination issue, unlike the benefits issue, has heretofore gone unaddressed during the confirmation process. Does the White House expect Senator Hagel to make this policy happen if he's, if he's confirmed the defense like that? Yeah, I, I would just point you to the numerous answers the Senator gave in response to questions about his support for the President's positions uh, on issues regarded to, regarding LGBT rights, including uh, with regard to uh, service in our military. I don't have anything more for you, but uh, you know, the President's positions on these issues are clear, uh, and he continues to uh, intend to make progress on them. Uh, as he made clear in his inaugural. Senator Hagel did express in his word, uh, uh, responses to the questions that he moved expedi expeditiously on the benefits issue. And he said last week that he has the President's attention. But when will these benefits be enacted? Well, I think expeditiously is uh, when they will get the attention, that, as Senator Hagel uh, rightly answered, and hopefully uh, with him at the Pentagon as soon as possible. Mark. Jay, has the White House been coordinating the timing of the departures of Cabinet members? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I think. Uh, Cabinet members have made uh, the decisions uh, that they've made uh, and uh, had conversations with the President about uh, what their plans are. Seems and like they're neatly stretched out. Well, I, I, but it, on the, I, I, how, do you, how do you square the two questions? One says that we're way behind in filling these positions. Another says that we're, uh, well, we need to get them all done <laughs> really quickly. So, the, you know, the President is obviously uh, having, uh, has had and will continue to have conversations with his uh, the leading members of his team, including cabinet secretaries. Are all of these um, departures uh, voluntary? Uh, is being pushed? I, I know uh, of no, uh, none that aren't voluntary. And uh, I would simply say that the president, as you've seen in the statements that he's made uh, after uh, some of his uh, cabinet secretaries have announced their departures, uh, he's been enormously grateful for uh, their service and their contribution to um, a series of policies that have helped pull this country out of the worst economy we've known most of us in our lifetimes uh, and have put it us, uh, pointed us in a far better direction. Uh, and he looks forward to those who are working with those who remain and, and uh, working with those uh, who will join the team after being confirmed by the Senate. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, you all. Week ahead. Oh, week ahead. yes, week ahead. Yeah. Hold on. On Monday, the President will travel to the Minneapolis Police Department Special Operations Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, where he will deliver remarks and discuss with local leaders and law enforcement officials his comprehensive set of common sense ideas to reduce gun violence. Minneapolis is a city that has taken important steps to reduce gun violence and foster a conversation in the community about what further action is needed. The President will visit with members of the community about their experiences and discuss additional steps that can be taken at the federal level to reduce gun violence. The President will return uh, to Washington, D.C in the evening. On Tuesday, the President will be here at the White House attending meetings. On Wednesday, uh, the President will attend the Democratic Senate Caucus retreat in Annapolis, Maryland, uh, a preview of the remarks I do not have. On Thursday, the President will deliver remarks at the National Prayer Breakfast uh, here, and then in the afternoon, he will travel to Leesburg, Virginia to deliver remarks at the House Democratic Issues Conference. On Friday, the President 
will attend meetings at the White House. Thanks very much. Happy uh, Friday. Have a good weekend. And happy Super Bowl. Go team.